The nationwide crackdown on hedge funds is most definitely heating up. And for the first time, prosecutors are publicly alleging what many have speculated for years, insider trading at Stevie Cohen's SAC Capital. Two former SAC portfolio managers were named in the latest round of charges yesterday. SAC says it's cooperating with the investigation. Chris Clark is a partner at Dewey and LaBeouf and a defense attorney who has worked on many insider trading cases, including one involving billionaire Mark Cuban. He's with us here this morning to talk about the latest charges and to help us figure out where this goes next. Chris, so many things that we learned yesterday not just thicken the plot, but make it so much more fascinating, the destruction of evidence. You know, it reminds us of the Martha Stewart M. Clone case, uh, you know, where people really wonder whether the cover-up is worse than the crime. In this case, probably not, right? Uh, probably not, but it certainly is not going to help defense counsel make it uh, seem as if this gentleman doesn't have a lot of serious problems. Uh, you don't go to the lengths. Uh, that this gentleman did if everything's hunky-dory and you have a very good explanation for what you've done. You don't cut up your USP drive and deposit it in four separate baggies and, <laughs> and then drop it in garbage trucks. Have, no matter what I've done, I can say I've never done it. So, yeah, it's a problem. Uh, you know, what does that tell us about the case? Does it tell us when you see potential defendants acting in that fashion, what does it signal to you as a defense attorney about the strength of the government's case? Well, I, I mean, you have to get some some real candor from your client at that point um, people but can't be paranoid though they can be and so you have to you know sit someone down and say look I'm your lawyer now why did you do this you need to tell me and the answer usually is not that good for the defense of the case it's it's usually there were things on there I didn't want anybody to see um, and at that point you have some difficult decisions to make because that's gonna get in front of a jury and most people the prosecution always opens with, ladies and gentlemen, use your common sense. Most people's common sense tells them you got rid of the evidence because it's not particularly good. Everybody wants to know about what happened inside SAC. Now, you're not representing SAC, and I wouldn't presume for a moment that you know exactly what went on. But what on the basis of what we've seen, what we've been told, can we surmise? On the one hand, SAC says it's cooperating and we should take them at their word. Yeah. On the other hand, we know now, at least based on the allegations that prosecutors have made, that insider trading may have taken place inside that firm. Does that suggest to you, based on what you've seen in similar cases, that compliance controls at SAC aren't tough enough? Not at all. I mean, I think, I think this is really unfair to hedge funds in general. You got a guy in the... SAC is based in Stanford, Connecticut. You got a guy in the New York office of SAC, and a guy, I think, in the Boston office of SAC. Uh, you know, when you hear about somebody at, and I don't want to pick on anybody, but Credit Suisse First Boston, insider trading, there isn't a huge headline, Credit Suisse insider trading scandal. Um, hedge funds are like everybody else. They have employees. They have people that work there. They try to supervise them. And I think it's easy to throw stones at them because they're high profile. It's easy to throw stones at Stevie Cohen because he's been very successful. But these guys aren't even in the same building as Stevie Cohen. And so um, I wouldn't draw any conclusions from it. I really wouldn't. And, and, and I think the attempt to do so is a little bit unfair to the industry. Okay, so it's not just an innocent until proven guilty. It's a case of don't tar everybody with the same brush just because they happen to work for the same company or even work in the same industry. Because as you know, there are a lot of people out there who say, what's he talking about? How can we possibly be unfair to hedge funds? I know what you're getting at. Yeah, I mean, it, it's you don't do it to the banks. I mean, the, there, are, there are constantly SEC and criminal settlements for employees of all kinds of different entities. And we don't say, you know, that entire industry is bad. Neither should we say that about hedge funds. Chris, where do you think this case goes next? You know, I, I, I didn't think we were going to see this latest one. So um, I think the, the reasons it might slow down are you do have limited resources and people are going to have to focus on this trial of Raj. So at some point, the rolling up of suspects has to end and the trying of suspects has to begin. Uh, I think that's going to start sooner, but I've been wrong before on this one. Well, the Raj Rajaratnam trial is due to begin soon. That's what you're talking about. Chris, thanks so much for joining us. Chris Clark of Dewey and LaBeouf.